everybody. I wanted to take a minute to share my testimony with you. I hope it encourages you. I've come out of incredible depression, anxiety, suicidal stuff, um, drug and alcohol abuse, a failing marriage, uh, crazy downward spiral life to now where I'm waking up in peace and joy every day, promise. It's available, life in Christ is remarkable, and God is alive and real. He wants to live inside of us and transform the world that we live in through us, that the day that we have is not dictated by the situations around us, but that we affect the world that we're living in powerfully through love and the experience of a relationship with Christ. Um, Coming out of Uh, childhood in in the church. My dad was a pastor, um, but mostly a powerless kind of mindset and probably a little bit more religious than anything else. Um, Had a lot of good things in life, but also had a lot of messed up stuff. There was some sexual abuse. There was um, middle child stuff. I'm a middle child. Oh, that's terrible. That's rough. Um, (laughs) um, My mom uh, lost it in my preteen-ish years um, with a dissociative identity disorder rearing its head and my parents kind of dealing with that. Thank God he has brought her through into completion, into salvation from all that. Um, To see a whole woman now, uh, to see all of those parts come together to make up one beautiful lady um, is amazing and most, I don't know if there's a whole lot of people at all who have ever been healed from such a thing or who come through that kind of thing as one family unit. So thank God for his grace over my family through those years. Um, But for me, I was a teenager who didn't know who he was, and so I just ran away a lot. I would spend most of the time away from the house. And when I was there, I was running away from church. I was running away from home. Um, I was getting into a lot of fights in high school, um, sleeping around a little bit, and uh, almost had two children. Uh, one was taken out a couple weeks after we found out we were having a child. Um, my girlfriend at the time was hit by a drunk driver uh, in her car, um, so she was okay, but she lost the child. All kinds of craziness um, back then. So from like 14 to 28, walked away from the Lord and encountered some intense stuff. A lot of it was just because it was self-destructive lifestyles um, that were inviting a lot of pain. Um, basically... Um, I considered myself an undercover Christian while I was horribly representing Christ, Um, not really talking about it a whole lot, but uh, when it came up, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm going to go to heaven, kind of thing, and really knowing nothing about what it meant to have heaven come and live inside of you. Um, So I lived a powerless, defeated life, and um, lived um, in, let's see, uh, smoking weed uh, in through college, um, and then it the non-gateway drug that I always used to celebrate that it wasn't turned into a gateway drug um, where I started doing cocaine and ecstasy, acid, mushrooms, all kinds of psychedelic stuff Um, and we thought we were just having fun but basically we were rotting our brains out and you don't really realize how crazy you are until you come on the other side of that. Um, so what seems like a shallow, like fun, like a shallow high that will always leave you wanting more. Um, and we used to say we were just lucky that we were too poor to get addicted to some of those things. Um, (laughs) um, we, uh, my wife and I should probably be dead. I should be in jail for a long time. I'm sure, um, with the stupid things, the horrible things, the selfish things that we did back in those days. Um, it's only by God's grace or the lucky ticket, you know, to, to come out of the other side. So, um, um, don't get involved with that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, it wasn't until after, um, my wife and I, my girlfriend at the time, we found out that we were going to have a baby at about 20 years old, um, that we stopped doing all this stuff. My wife completely stopped. She even stopped smoking cigarettes. So good for her. I know that's hard for a lot of people to do. Um, but you know, mama stuff, she turned into automatic mom mode, but actually, which actually, uh, the automatic mom mode kind of messed with me, uh, mom mode, father mode, um, and stopping the irresponsible things to try and be responsible. Now all that kind of stuff combined to make a perfect storm, which turned to anxiety and depression for years, suicidal stuff. I, uh, the selfish stuff inside of me turned into, uh, you know, despising life hating my wife, 
uh, wanting to run away or take my own life. Um, uh, I justified a lot of horrible things that I did in, in my marriage years um, through selfish mindsets. And my wife stuck through all of that stuff uh, and, until uh, basically uh, it was the end. We were almost divorced twice. And, she stuck through all the way until it was like, we're going out for the divorce dinner. And at, at this point, we, we realized that we need to try and do one last Hail Mary. Let's, let's, um, let's go to couples therapy. Let's go to counseling because, hey, let's do something to help us communicate better. Uh, we went through three months one time without communicating barely at all. Um, and uh, that was kind of, <laughs> kind of one of the things that kicked off the end there. Um, but uh, we went to couples therapy. I went to therapy. Uh, my therapist said, well, no wonder you're so nuts, man. <laughs> you're chemically imbalanced because you've been doing all these drugs that chemically imbalanced you. Um, let's get you off of uh, the drinking now, which is obviously causing depression um, because it's a depressant, um, and get you on a medication. So I got on four different medications over a period of a year and a half. Um, I didn't want to at first, but he, it was a good idea, and like he said, I could do. I ended up weaning myself off, or, off of the drugs after about a year and a half, two years, and was doing really well for a while, uh, maybe six months after I stopped seeing him kind of thing that was doing well, and then um, started recognizing that stress in life, um, job, marriage, fatherhood, all that stuff for a young guy, um, uh, caught the stress put me back into the drinking category and, and I was coming home and drinking out of a bottle of cheap tequila to just play with my son and, and I'm at work one day and I realized that there is no way <laughs> this is happening. Uh, I have thought my way through it so well. I mean, I mean, it came out of that and, and you know, I, I thought I could think my way through this, but it re I realized that there was something uh, off and so I reached out to God, and I believe that it was Him that spoke to me to draw me to talk to Him in the first place. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. I, I can't, I don't know how to move forward. And, and I believe that He graced me that day. Grace means gift, and He gifted me an open eye to see how selfish I was. Uh, the self-centered life that I had been living was destroying my life and everyone's life around me. And so I suddenly woke up basically and I was like, oh, grossed out. And I was like, God, I can't do this anymore. I'm so tired of trying to live for myself. And so I gave my life to him and I went home that night and I said, uh, I said, uh, Honey, I, I gave my life back to God, and, and she's like, good, you need it, kind of thing. I hope something works for you, basically, because I was like this. And, um, and uh, so for about a year, nothing really changed in the natural. Um, I did a lot of the same things, and I, I think it's amazing that God didn't demand I stop smoking cigarettes, swearing, uh, drinking, whatever, um, but that he would work in me to show me that I could trust him and that he loved me for about a year. It was intense. I remember praying one day on a Monday coming in, seeing the whole outlook for the week and just anxiety coming back and going, oh no. And um, and I said, God, I need uh, strength and peace today. I need I need you to give me peace and strength to make it through this. And uh, you know, next thing I know, you know, I'm driving home that night with tunnel vision going, oh my goodness, how did that happen? I'm you know, just waves of emotion that were just coming. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> There's not possible. And just watching a whole year of him working inside of me. And I recognized anything I would ask him to do inside of me, he would do. And um, so he wooed me for about a year until I finally went back to church where I said I'd never to go to with where all those judgmental, judgmental hypocritical people are. <laughs> Irony. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I finally, through supernatural circumstances, was directed to this amazing church called Convergence Center out of the Global Awakening Building in Mechanicsburg. Um, Pastor Ben and Micah Williams um, uh, helped me uh, during that time. Their whole church was full of love and empowerment. Um, I remember the, the one lady prophesied to me one, my first day there and, and gave me a word about who I was and what the Lord was calling me to my whole life and, and it was really good it was powerful and um, and uh, so so 
Ben and Micah saw the hunger in me and so kept on feeding me more and more and more. And so Ben used to say, you know, you want more? You want more? So he'd give me like some Dan Moeller, some Todd White. And, um, and I found uh, some global awakening, um, obviously, um, because I'm there. <laughs> and, uh, and I found out that Holy Spirit would empower me to not have to fight sin, but that I was a new nature, um, that the born again experience was the beginning of God showing me what it was like to live as a son. And so finding out that I uh, was empowered to not sin, that I wouldn't have to struggle with this or that. And I watched uh, after I was filled with Holy Spirit, I was baptized and all that kind of stuff eventually. But man, I was filled with the Spirit before I got baptized. So or whatever you want to have a theology on that one. Uh, that's fun, but I had some crazy experiences before I ever got baptized uh, with water. Um, and uh, really good stuff. Um, I, I watched things like pornography fall away, uh, swearing, two days of swearing, cigarettes. I tried dozens of times to quit smoking cigarettes and I watched, uh, I woke up on day two, which I always said, I never make it past day two, there's just so much anxiety and stuff and I just never make it past it. Day two, I just woke up and didn't need a cigarette. Amazing things like that. Um, watched um, things fall off, swearing. I was a pro with the F-bomb, all of a sudden I, I no longer uh, spoke that way. Just, I, I, I didn't want it and I said, Lord, take it from me and poof, he just <laughs> It's amazing what happens when we just surrender to him. Um, so I watched my life get so transformed during that period of time that my wife was not ready for it. And at first she's not on a good communication because she's like, I can't relate to you. And, and, and I'm, I felt alone for probably a year of, of all this transition, but about six months into the, the power, empowered life thing where I'm watching people get healed at the grocery stores. Um, I, I'm uh, prophesying things, speaking things out that I felt the, the word, Lord was saying to me for people and I couldn't possibly know and it transforms and people get saved. I've watched countless people get healed physically. Um, words that the Lord wants to speak just come out in clarity and people go, oh my gosh, and the Lord just wrecks people's hearts. Um, he did it to me. He so wants to do it to other people too and, and just love on people. Um, he's alive. He's powerful. He's God Almighty. Don't limit him, you know. <laughs> um, but my my wife eventually she couldn't face the transformation um, and deny God's love any longer. And the Lord had ter told me during those years, He's like, just keep love her, love her in life. And um, and so it didn't matter what her perspectives were. I was just gonna love her and show her the transformation that was going on in me. And so she gave her life to the Lord. We we're both baptized at that church. We have watched for six years the Lord uh, hold us and keep us as we give our lives to Him. I've watched, I've watched Him hold us so close and so full of peace as friends have walked away, as we've gone through crazy trials, um, persecutions, all kinds of stuff um, that uh, people care about usually. <laughs> but the glory of the Lord is much worth, more worth looking at. Jesus uh, is so much more worth keeping our eyes on um, and just watch the grace that will come on your life the, the encouragement that want the fire that wants to live inside of you um, so um, all this to say blessing and favor has been a part of my life for six years direction and peace through whatever problems we've gone through some serious stuff during our saved years but it is amazing what the Lord has done as we trust him and don't worry. It's amazing how he comes in and just does the impossible over and over. Watch some pretty awesome miracles. I'll, I wanna share a lot of testimonies uh, of that kind of stuff on my uh, YouTube here. Um, but I would just encourage you, um, I, I get to live in peace and joy um, and truth. Um, I am the same person with you as anyone else and I feel good about that and I would encourage you, um, that Christ in you, the hope of glory, is a very real thing. God Almighty wants to put himself inside you, a seed to transform the world that you would not see for yourself, that selfish stuff would fall away, that Jesus would be glorified, that your life would be changed and you'd be filled with joy and peace, that you'd be overflowing fountain 
and I get to experience that, I would encourage you, if you have never given your life to the Lord, do it. It was the best decision, hands down, that I've ever made. It has opened my eyes to fully enjoy the marriage I had, the children that I have, the life that I get to live, whether struggles or not, I get to experience bliss in Him. He's a glorious God, and He's called me into union. He's called you into union, too. If you've never experienced the person of Christ, religion has little to do with it. He loves you. He's crazy about you, and He wants to get all over you. He wants to transform everything and wake you up in His joy and speak to your heart. He wants to show you a world that you can live in that you aren't worried about other people and their decisions or sicknesses that might come on you. Man, he can get glory through it all. He is glory, God Almighty, and he loves you like crazy. I love you guys. I hope you guys subscribe and, and follow me and stuff like that so that we can I can encourage people. I want to try and do that on a large scale now. Um, so love you guys. See ya.